Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Hutch, and we're on Module 10, Lesson 3, which is Generating Multiple Samples. Uh, really, it should be titled Analyzing uh, Data uh, by looking at variability, uh, the mean, uh, median, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so really, that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, before we get into the actual lesson, uh, we're going to start off way down here with variability in basketball because it gives you a good visual of what we're going to be talking about today. Um, I also want to remind you of a couple things from sixth grade, uh, maybe even fifth grade here. Uh, so median, remember, is the middle, okay? And then the mean means the average, okay? Uh, and so when you're thinking about these two things, uh, a couple things to be aware of, okay? Uh, when you're finding the median, you just cross out each side and you're left with a middle median number. Uh, now, as you go, if you cross out both sides and you end up with two numbers in the middle, remember you just uh, add them up and divide by two or basically you go in between the two of them. So you end up with a median of 4.5. So just be aware of that with medians. Uh, when we're doing the average, remember we add up all the digits and then divide by how many there are. So in this case, seven, and we get an average. Basically, it's like shoving all the numbers together into one number. Uh, so that's mean and median. Now there's this other thing from sixth grade called MAD or mean absolute deviation. Uh, so let's sort of break that apart. Obviously mean means the average. So we want to know um, how much deviation every number has from the mean, okay? And we're going to actually take the average of that. So um, absolute just means the answers are all going to be positive because be, uh, we're doing the distance away from the mean. Uh, and so distance away from the mean is always going to be a positive number. So sort of like absolute value. So we're, uh, deviation means how far away. So what's the positive distance away from the mean. So that's mean absolute deviation. Uh, and so all you do is you have to find the mean first, okay? Uh, and then we find out how far away all the numbers are from the mean. So you just subtract them uh, to find out how far they are from the mean. So if the mean is 10 and you have another number that's 8, 10 minus 8 is 2. Okay, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, all right, so anyway, you find out how far apart they all are and then divide by how many pieces of data you have to find the average distance away from the mean. So that's mean absolute deviation. Uh, let's go ahead and see how that actually looks. So let's take a look at uh, Terry and Chris's basketball games. And this is how many baskets scored per game. Okay. Um, so think about how many games this is. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight games. And one of the games, Terry scored nine. Another game, Terry scored nine and so on. Okay. Uh, for Chris, one game, he scored two. One game, he scored five. Two games, he scored eight and so on. Okay. Uh, so what's interesting about these is if you would look at these, would you say they're the same or different? Well, obviously, they're very different, right? Uh and then you can start analyzing things. Like, obviously, Terry is way more consistent. Uh, Chris is shooting some 13s, 14s, and 15s and things like that. So as a coach, you have to think, well, like, what do I want? Do I want Chris who can get 13, 14, 15 but could also get two? Or do I want consistent Terry? So it's an interesting, like, sort of coaching conversation there. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and analyze their graphs, though. It says the coach notices that the mean and the median for both players is exactly the same. So think about how crazy that is. Um, the mean for Terry uh, is exactly the same mean for Chris somehow. So the mean and also the medians are the same. So you couldn't even tell a difference based on those two numbers. So they are asking us to find the mean and the median for both players. So let's go ahead and do that as like a review, okay? So remember we're adding up everything. So nine plus nine plus nine, okay? Nine, 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 nine plus nine. Or we could say something like four times nine plus four of the tens, okay? That would be an easier way to plug it in, right? Instead of all that. Okay, a more algebraic version. Um, so let's go ahead and get the total of this. Uh, 4 times 9 is 36. 
4 times 10 is 40. 40 plus 36, 40, 50, 60, 76. So we have 76. And then really we could take this whole thing and divide it by how many pieces of data there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is going to find the mean or the average. Okay, So we have 76 uh, divided by 8. And so let's go ahead and calculate that. 76 divided by 8. And we have 9.5. Okay, uh, So the mean equals 9.5. Okay, um, We know they're the same. Uh, so we really don't need to calculate Chris's, right? Because they already said they're the same. So the mean is 9.5 for Chris also. Uh, let's go ahead and find the median. The median is the middle. Okay, uh, Let's go ahead and use Chris's to practice that. So we would cross out one on that side, one on that side, one on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right, one on the left, one on the right. And you can see uh, when we're crossing those out, we have nothing in the middle. So really we have an 8 and an 11 left over. So to find the median, we would do 8 plus 11 divided by 2. We want to find what's in the middle of those two. Uh, and so if we do 8 plus 11 divided by 2, you can see 13.5. Uh, oops, that's not right. I don't want to do... 11 divided by 2, so 8 plus 11, and we need to put that in parentheses, and then all of it divided by 2 is 9.5. There we go. Okay, so the median, the middle, is also 9.5, which was pretty easy to see for Terry's anyway. Okay, so we have the mean and the median is 9.5. Okay, uh, all right, so can you find the mean and the median for both players? Yes. Mean, 9.5, median, 9.5. Okay, so just looking at those, you have no idea about the players. Uh, do you think that Chris and Terry's performance performed equally well during the first eight games of this season? This is sort of just a you thinking about it. You know, I think for me as a coach, I would want the consistent player and then we can continue to grow rather than Chris, who's inconsistent. But maybe you could uh, come up with some thought of your own for number two. Um, what is different about Chris's and Terry's performance on the basketball courts? OK, so this is where we get into uh, what's called variability. OK, one of them has a very small variability, meaning it doesn't vary much from the mean. Um, and one of them has a pretty big variability. And so that's all we're going to say on that um, is Terry has low variability and Chris has high variability. And vary just means like how much does it change or... Uh, how how much does it change from like sort of this consistency, you know, if something varies. So you could have high variability, meaning really spread out, or very low variability, like uh, it's very close together, okay? All right, they want you to give a number to the variability. And the way that we give a number to the variability is by calculating the MAD or mean absolute deviation. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and calculate that for both players. And this is a little bit annoying. Uh, it's not something you're going to want to always do in life, uh, especially if you can see the variation. Uh, you don't really need to calculate the mean absolute deviation, but let's go ahead and get some practice with that. That's the point of this one. Okay, so the mean for both of them is 9.5. So when we're finding the mean absolute deviation, we want to know, remember, what is the absolute value, basically? How far away are each of our pieces of data from the mean? Okay, so if we're looking at these basketballs, we know the mean is 9.5. That's right here. Okay, so this one is only 0 0.5 from the mean, this one 0 0.5 from the mean, and so on. On this side, these are only 0 0.5 from the mean and 0 0.5 from the mean. So what we do is we say how far apart they all are, okay? And we go ahead and add that up and find the 
average of how far apart they all are. So obviously for this one, uh, we have 8, 0 0.5, so I can do 0 0.5 times 8, okay? And 4 divided by 8, oops, I need to enter an answer, is going to put us and say, well, the average distance away is obviously 0 0.5, okay? Um, so for this one, our mean absolute deviation equals 0 0.5. So very low number, right? Um, this is what's called low variability. Okay, let's go ahead and find the mean absolute deviation of Chris. Okay, so we already know the mean is 9.5. Okay, so right here is our mean. So how far apart is are all the data from the mean? Okay, so let's take care of a little bit of time. I'm going to erase all this other marks here. Okay, so basically we're doing 9.5, and then we're looking at this data, and so we would be doing 9.5 minus 8 to find out how far away it is. Okay, but we can do some mental math here and just record stuff down. So we have an 8. How far away is it from 9.5? It's 1.5. Okay, so we have a 1.5. 1.5 away. Let's look at this way. We have 0.5 and 1. We have a 1.5 away. Uh, how far apart are the other ones? So go ahead and uh, let's get these all filled out. So 13 is 1, 2, 3.5 away, which means 14 is 4.5, 15 is 5.5 away. Okay, and this is where the absolute part comes from mean absolute deviation because we're basically taking the absolute value, okay? The positive distance away from the mean. All right, let's see this. So we have one, one, two, three, four and a half away from the mean and five and a half, six and a half, seven and a half away from the mean, okay? Which is the same thing you would get if you uh, did your 9.5, okay, minus the 2, and you would equal 7.5, the same thing, okay? All right, so here we go. Uh, now that we have all the distances away, we want to find the average distance away. So this is where we have to add up all that data, okay? So we have 7.5 plus 4.5 away plus 1.5 plus 1.5 plus 1.5, plus 1.5, 3.5, plus 3.5, plus 4.5, plus 5.5. So my total amount of distances away is 30, and then we're going to uh, go ahead and put that in parentheses, that whole thing, if I can do that. I should have thought about that first. Or I could just hit answer, I guess. Enter an answer. That probably would have been a little easier. I'll do that. So 30, and then we're going to divide by how many pieces of data there are. And remember, that was 8 games. Um, so divided by 8, and we have 3.75. Okay, so our mean absolute deviation for this one equals 3.75. So that's saying, on average, how far away the data is from the mean. Um, on average, it's about three, almost four baskets away from the mean. And that tells us that this data is more spread out, okay? So we can say high variability. And only through experience and in context can you decide what is maybe medium variability or high variability. Um, it's sort of up to your own interpretation, but low is obviously very close to zero variability. Okay, So now you can see the big difference in numbers when the other numbers didn't really do anything for us. Okay, So what is T Terry's mean absolute deviation? Um, we wrote it up there, so we won't worry about it. Let's just save some time. Um, is it closer to zero than Chris's? Okay, uh, well, is Terry's closer to zero? Yep, it is. So what does that mean? Okay, um, and let's go ahead and write this. It means he has low variability. Okay, what does it mean for Terry? Okay, 
Let's just put high variability, okay? Or in other words, very a lot, a lot less consistency and things like that, okay? So that's what we're going to be working with today, but I wanted to give you a little practice with what mean absolute deviation means. So let's go ahead up to the actual notes today. And your homework is only one problem, so it'll be nice and quick. So basically what they did is they went into a textbook or um, a reading, uh, some sort of novel, and they um, calculated, they did some random sampling and found 10 words okay, from a book. And they counted up how many letters were in those words and wrote down all those amounts. Okay, And then they went ahead and found the mean of how many uh the size of words in this particular book based on the data, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and calculate that mean. Remember, mean is average. We take the sum of the values and divide by how many pieces of data there are. So let's go ahead and add up all those numbers real quick and calculate the mean. So go ahead and do that on your own as well. Okay, I got 53. I hope I'm right. It's hard to see my calculator here. 7 plus 6 plus 4 plus 5, 7, 6, 6, 8, 3, 1, 53. Okay, yep, I think we're good there with the total of 51. Okay, or 53. So I have 53, and we're going to divide by how many there are, which is 10. And 53 divided by 10 is one swoop to the left. So we have a mean of 5.3. So on average, the word size is 5.3 words, which we know you can't have, or letters. You know we can't have 5.3 letters, but this is still the data that we receive, okay? So there's the mean, okay? Uh, let's go ahead and take a look now. We're going to take that 5.3 as sample one, and you can see we're putting it right here. And then we're going to run the same 10-word sample a hundred times, okay? Uh, hopefully we have a hundred people doing it. Otherwise, that would be a really long task. So anyway, sample one is this here, okay? So you're clear on what's going on here. We're taking this whole thing and it becomes sample one, okay? So now we did that same thing a hundred times and we have lots of data. Okay. And if you take a look, here is our data that we collected and the mean that we found. So you can see if we only did this a little bit, maybe the data would just be here. But when you do it a hundred times, you start getting way uh, more clarity into the average number of letters per word um, in a certain book. Okay. And so that's something to be aware of too. Remember, the more sampling you do, the more accurate uh, your results are and your inferences. Uh, so it says make an inference based on the graph. Okay. Um, so what would you just say about this? Okay. What do you think the uh, most common word size is? If you're thinking somewhere around here, I would agree. Okay. So I would say something like um, most common word size is, and of course we should say about 4.8 letters, something like that. Okay, so that's making an inference. Um, now let's go ahead and get into variability, okay? Um, and variability, when we say the word variability, we're asking you about the mean absolute devi deviation or how spread out is the data? So if you look at something like this, would you say this is, has high, low, or no variability uh, among these samples? Okay. So if we said, obviously, this is the mean right here is 25. So how far off is all the data from the mean? Well, it's zero off, right? So the mean absolute deviation on this one, we don't even have to calculate. It's zero. So what would that be called? How much variation is there? Well, there's zero. So we would say that this is no variability at all, okay? 
Uh, so let's take a look at something like this. Okay, What would you say the variability is on this? I think if you look at this, right, the mean's probably somewhere around here, just making a guess. Okay, um, We could probably say because it's so spread out that it has high variability. Okay, So let's circle this. So that's what we would probably say at just first glance if someone said describe the variability. But let's actually go ahead and uh, find the actual number so that we know how far all the data is from the mean. So step one is we need to find the mean so that we can actually find out how far all the data deviates from the mean. Okay, And so remember that each of these dots or points on here is a piece of data. Okay, And so we need to go ahead and find the mean. So we have 15. Oops. Uh, not 15, 5, 5 plus 10 plus 15 plus another 15, because there's two of them here, plus 20 plus 25 plus 25 plus 30 plus 35 plus 35 plus 40 plus 45. So we have a total sum of 300, and then we would divide by how many there are. So we got to count that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Notice I do tick marks so I don't make a mistake. So let's go ahead and hit enter, answer, divided by 12, and we get a mean of 25, okay, which is actually what we predicted. Okay. So the question is, if we want to find the mean absolute deviation, what is the average distance each data has from the mean? Okay. And so that's what we're going to go ahead and calculate now. So let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit and get rid of all of our tick marks and all that stuff. Okay. We want to know how far everything is from the mean. And here's the mean right here is 25. Okay. So let's go ahead and just make some notes. Um, I don't think you'd probably want to write out all the subtraction. Most of the time you can do some mental math. Unless it's tricky decimals, you'll probably want to subtract it. Uh, but I think we can probably handle this just fine Okay, because they're in intervals of five. Okay, So these are zero away from the mean. That's easy. Okay, This is five away. This is five away. Uh, let's see, 25... 30, 35, these are 10 away, this is 15 away, and this is 20 away. So how far are the other ones? Let's go ahead and do that then. These are both 10 away, this is 15 away from the mean, and this is 20 away from the mean. Okay, 5, 10, 15, 20, yep, just double checking. Okay, all right, so let's find the average distance away everything is from the mean. So we have to add up all those numbers. Okay, it, mean absolute deviation is definitely not uh, super fun to do. It's cool to say that you know how to do it and you know what the heck that word means, uh, but it's definitely not the most fun thing. I don't need to do plus zero plus zero, but I do need to divide by that many things. Uh, so plus five, plus 10, plus 10, plus 15, plus 20. So my total sum... Okay, of distance away, I'm just going to record this down, is 120. Okay, And then we want to go ahead and divide by how many there are. And remember, um, there were 12 pieces of data. So I'm going to hit Enter, Answer, divided by 12. Okay, uh, So the mean absolute deviation is 10. And so that means on average, all the data is 10 away from the mean. So remember, if we look up here, zero away from the mean is no variability. 10 away from the mean, I would definitely say um, that is high variability. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and write, we can officially say high variability. And we have the proof is right there. Okay, so that's how you do mean absolute deviation. All right, let's go ahead and do this last problem, and then you can try it out on the homework. And then next activity is really fun. We're going to be actually shooting some basketball hoops to create some data uh, uh, to practice this a little bit more.
okay? So here we go. Uh, 10 years ago, researchers randomly gathered eight samples of 100 manatees eat. Do you know what manatees' nicknames are? The sea cow. They really do look like cows underwater. They're pretty cool, and they're super friendly. Uh, you could easily, like, go in and touch and pet them, even though, I don't know, I don't know if people like you doing that, but they're really nice animals. Anyway, uh, so this year they repeated the experiment with eight different samples of the same size, and the table shows the mean weights of these samples, okay? Uh, can the researchers infer that the weight of the manatee population has less variation this year than from 10 years ago and explain? So one thing is, so we're wondering how far is all this data away from the mean? Is it really spread out or is it really close? The problem is it's not in some sort of uh, graph. Uh, it's not in some sort of uh dot plot or anything like that so it's really hard to visually see what it looks like uh, so since you can't see it uh, then one quick way not maybe not quick but one thing we can do is just look at the mean absolute deviation okay and so if the mean absolute deviations uh, are the same then uh, we know that the variation uh, isn't really uh, much difference, okay? Uh, so let's go ahead and see uh, what the mean absolute deviation is of each of these. To save a little bit of time, I did add up uh, the, all those means for you already. Um, so we can just go ahead and uh, divide by 8 to find what the mean is for each of those. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so right now their totals are pretty close together. So 7696 divided by 8. Okay, um, so our mean equals 962 for this one. And then let's go ahead and do the next one. So 7688 divided by 8. Our mean for this year is 961. So the means are really, really close, right? But that doesn't mean that they have the same variation. One could still be really spread out, meaning the weights of the manatee are really spread out, um, and one could be really close together. We don't know, okay? Because remember the basketball, they had the same mean, uh, but the graphs definitely did not look the same, you know? So this could be manatees that all weigh about the same, and this could be we have big variation in manatees. So let's see what actually happens. We're going to have to find the mean absolute deviation. So how far away is every piece of data from the mean? Okay, And so this is where it's going to get a little bit annoying because we're comparing everything to 962, um, and it's not easy to calculate or see. Okay, So this is where I want to find the difference of each one, and I'm probably going to write it right here. Okay, so we grab the calculator. Let me make it a little bit bigger here. Okay, and then I'm going to have you do, maybe you can do the right side and I do the left side type of thing. Uh, and we'll get this all done here. Okay, so I want to find how far away each is from the mean. So 962 is the mean minus 944. Okay, this one's 18 away from the mean. Okay. Uh, 962, oops, you just back up, minus 980, this one's 18 away. Notice I'm taking the absolute deviation, so even though it says negative 18, I can just say it's 18 away. Back up, uh, 1025, 63 away from the mean, even though it's negative, okay, it's still 63 away, okay, and then we have 962, that's zero away. 886 is 76 away. 872 is 90 away. 1052 is 90 away in the opposite direction. Okay. And then uh, let's see. 975 is 13 away. Okay. All right, and then if you did the right side, go ahead and skip to me finishing the right side, and you can see if we have the same thing. 
Okay, so now I'm going to change it to 961 minus 24 away, 18 away, 64 away. These seem, maybe they seem far away, I don't know. 39 away, 2 away, that's pretty close. 24 away, only 3 away, and 38 away, okay? So now that we have those, we need to find the average distance away everything is. That's how we're going to find the mean absolute deviation. So what's the average uh, positive number away from the mean? So we got to add up all those numbers now. So 18, ah, 18 plus 18 plus 63 plus 0 plus 76 plus 90 plus 90 plus 13. And all of that answer divided by, do we have eight samples? Okay, so the average amount away, my mean absolute deviation for this side is, the data is a spread of about 46 away from the mean. That's pretty high variation. Let's see what it is for um, this year's weight of the manatee. So we have 24 plus 18. And actually, if I put this in parentheses, then I can just... Divide at the end. 24 plus 18 plus 64 plus 39 plus 2. Oops, did I do that right? I think I did. Plus 2 plus 24 plus 3 plus 38. And parentheses divided by 8. And this mean absolute deviation is 26.5 apart. Okay. So now we can look at those numbers and they tell us a lot. Okay. So can the researchers infer that the weight of the mantee has less variation this year? Well, does it? If you look at this compared to last year, does it have less variation? Yeah, it does. Um, almost half the variation of 10 years ago. So that means they're all getting closer to the same weight. Okay. Um, so yes, because the MAD for this year is 26.5 and was 46 10 years ago, okay? So some sort of sentence like that to explain your reasoning, okay? So it definitely has a lower variation, okay? So that's a good review of variability or mean absolute deviation. Let's go ahead to your homework. Your homework is a ton. Nope, it's just this one problem and that's it. Uh, so here's a dot plot and it's displaying 14 random samples, uh, each consisting of 30 middle school students. Uh, each dot represents the mean number of sports played per year by students in the sample. Um, which number best resent, represents the mean of sports played by middle school students? So I want you to calculate the mean and show your work here. Um, and then find and interpret the variability. So this is where you're going to calculate the mean absolute deviation and explain whether it's high uh, zero, high, or low variability. But I think visually you can see that you'd probably say high variability, uh, but you need to have the number to go along with it. So that's your homework. Go ahead and try out uh, mean absolute deviation. Okay. All right. Good job today.